Hi, I'm CJ Elmerig with TransWest Trek Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We've got a brand new Cimarron North Star three horse gooseneck sitting behind me. This is a 2024 model. Let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing. I'll show you how this trailer actually lays out, uh, give you some specs on it. So this is a standard whip trailer, 610 wide, standard height, 71 tall. It's 18 foot on the floor, so not a big trailer at all. This will be a really easy trailer to maneuver in and out about everywhere. We have a front tack room on it with a 3.8 short wall. Uh, this is a, a trailer that will get the actual weight, the empty weight of the trailer posted uh, under our stock number in the on our website so you can see the actual weight. But this is a trailer here that I would have no problem with a lot of these newer half ton pickups that are rated 9,000 plus uh, to be able to, to haul around. As long as you have an integrated brake controller or an aftermarket brake controller, you're totally fine on this type of a setup. So on these Cimarron's, you're all aluminum construction. You have an eight year structure warranty, three year hardware warranty. So that's your hitch to bumper. And then you also have a one year, no questions asked warranty on your tires through the vendor that Cimarron uses, Lion's Head. So if we're gonna look at this trailer, very first thing underneath the gooseneck, you're just gonna notice on this one here, because it's not a big trailer by any means, we have a single leg manual crank jack. But what if you say, I want an uh, electric over hydraulic, I want to push a button, I'm done cranking these trailers up and down. One thing you'll notice is where the spare tire is located. On our standard width Cimarron 610 wide, we don't have as wide of a box, so we're somewhat limited. So normally this tire was down low, we had the space for it, but when we needed to put an electric over hydraulic system on it, we had to relocate it where it's currently at because it takes a bigger footprint for what we need to be able to operate that setup. So we actually started elevating ours. Now it's a standard option on these trailers to get it up out of the way. <coughs> the other thing too, is if you do decide to go with that type of option through our parts and service department, the framework is already right here for our battery box. These are pieces that we would have to do after the fact that would cost you more time and more money in order to put that hydraulic jack system on here. So very simple to do. Our parts um, service department, again, can help you out with that. But again, it's got the manual set up right now. This isn't a big trailer by any means, so it is pretty easy to crank up and down. But I understand if you just want to push a button and up and down the trailer goes. The length of a Cimarron nose is 8.2. A lot of the competitors run a 7.6 to 7.8. Uh, there's a couple things. One, you gain a little bit more storage. But two, if you're running like a long box truck and you have your tailgate down, you still can have your tailgate down and walk through this area. A lot of competitors will have their, uh, on a long box will drop that and it has the potential of getting into the spare tire. Um, you just don't have as much room to operate. Uh, that's why I really like the length of these Cimarron's because you have that ability to kind of work behind them even in those type of scenarios. The other thing is, is we build our gooseneck drop walls. So from this point here to the bottom of the box at 53 inches, standard is 50. We like to build ours at 53. Yes, you do cut a three inches into your nose, but on these newer pickups because of the bed heights, now we can have our trailer running level, equal weight distribution on the two axles and have plenty of bed clearance. We can adjust that coupler how we need to uh, based on that, depending on the scenario. But if you look at a lot of newer trucks with older trailers, you'll notice they have minimal bed clearance. They're gonna tear up that bed uh, eventually. I'll never say you would never get in your bed in this type of a scenario, but because of these steps, it really will drastically reduce that. Or the other option is they've got it nosed way up and it's run on the back axle, which we don't want as well. So again, that's standard on ours. Uh, again, gives us a lot of just flexibility when you roll in with a newer pickup. Um, in today's world, all, all the manufacturers have gone taller bed heights uh, with GM changing their body style. So this is a charcoal metallic sheeting. White is standard. When we upgrade to like a charcoal metallic, silver metallic, black, those are probably the most popular options. There is a little bit of a uh, upcharge on that, but it's a good look. It really blends in well with a lot of the color, uh, just options that they're putting on the newer trucks out there today. So again, it's a good look to it. Uh, the charcoal metallic isn't gonna show dirt quite as bad as 
like a black weld. It's just no different than passenger vehicles from that standpoint. Uh, but again, I, I really like the look of that. <clears throat> so we have a 42 inch wide door and I'll show you why here in a minute. First thing you're gonna notice is this fold up step. It's on a gas shock, so it's really easy to operate. But from where we're at ground level to getting into the, this bottom door frame, that is a big step. So by having that fold up step on there, it makes that transition so much easier getting into this tack room. And then that 42 inch wide door comes into play with this swing out saddle rack. If this was a narrower door opening, which a lot of manufacturers will do, they'll run like a 36 inch wide door. So imagine six inches closer, probably about there. We have the potential of saddles dragging on this door frame going in and out. But that 42 inch wide door allows for this swing out saddle rack, three tiers. These are adjustable as well, so we can move them up down. We can add more, add more blanket poles, whatever you want there. But you've got the capability to still walk in and out of this tack room, whether this is swung out or in. So again, swing out uh, saddle rack, it's on a gas shock as well. But again, just swings in, out of the way. Now as we come into the tack room, you're gonna have rubber on the floor, carpet on the boot box. The boot box is a 12 inch partial across. Great to throw smaller items in here so they're not moving around in transit. You can use it as a bench, sit down, take a break, or hop up as a step up into the nose. And then you have carpet on the, on the uh, drop wall and then also the deck. And then there's a good look at that eight too long nose. So again, a lot of space in this. So you can throw a mattress, bed rolls, sleeping bags in there, plenty of room. You have your windows so you can see out, create a cross breeze as well. I'm a big fan of that. I'd get claustrophobic if it was all sealed up in here. Um, we are framed for an air conditioner. So if we ever wanted to add that or even a camper style vent, uh, they all have the same footprint. That piece is already done. That is just like that spare tire and then the framework for the battery box if we added that on. Let's go ahead and take care of it now. Saves a lot of time, a lot of hassle from that standpoint. On the short wall, you're gonna have a shelf with a lip on it, 18 inches deep. This thing is really stout. It's great to throw some items up here, maybe a hat can, smaller items. You don't have to worry about shifting. It's got rubber up there to kind of give it some grip. And then you have a clothes bar that goes across. So again, we can hang clothes in here rather than taking up space in the back of the pickup. Uh, you can hop in here, change if you need to. Um, but it's nice to have some places where items have a place to ride when we're actually in transit. Bridle hooks with carpet behind them so we're not rubbing against the aluminum. These are aluminum powder coated. So this is a design that Cimarron's actually built um, for their trailers. I give them a lot of credit because they put some height and some depth to them, give us a pretty good gap between them. We understand you're gonna throw a lot of head stalls, reins, lead ropes, you know, those type of items that you come in, they're usually hanging off. Um, but these are really stout and nice. We can go in and add more after the fact if you want, uh, but the carpet definitely helps. Again, protecting those type of items from rubbing on that aluminum. And then behind the saddle rack, that's usually some wasted space, is a 25 gallon corner water tank. It's just gravity feed to fill from the top. You get a hose, I'd put a ball valve on it. That way you can run that hose right outside, put your buckets on the ground and fill them up. These are fantastic to keep um, on trailers just because if you have a horse that only likes water from home, you can carry that with you. Uh, but if you get to events and a hydrant's a long way away, if, rather than packing buckets, you got some right here at the trailer. And really simple to operate um, when it comes time, if, if you need to sanitize it or even just drain it when it comes winter time, it's really easy to do that. And then on that 42 inch wide door, you're gonna have a four tier blanket pole rack. It's on a gas shock as well. Brush tray, throw those smaller items in there, your brushes, your fly sprays, hoof picks, those type of items there. Go ahead and shut that, it's a little windy here today. But again, operation of that, very simple. The one cool thing too is all these are key to like, all these doors that I'm gonna show you. So this tack door, drop doors, rear doors, everything's gonna have the exact same key. And then there's a good look at that charcoal metallic. Again, it's a sharp, I think it's a good contrast with the rusty aluminum on this trailer and the windows, I think it all ties together. 
Now, let's get to the horse area. As you can see, this one here has drop windows on tail side. <laughs> so if you live down south in those real hot, humid uh, states, or you just want a lot of airflow, this is a really great setup because you're gonna get a lot more airflow. I, I do give Cimarron credit. Their bus windows that they normally use, um, they try to maximize that size. So this is not the standard bus window. These are the bus windows that they're just gonna put in, the, in these drop windows, in these feed doors that we're looking at here. But you can get a lot more airflow with this type of a setup. And then if you do need to seal it up, you can go ahead and shut it. Still operate those bus windows within these drop windows here. But this is these are really stout. I'll show you when we get to the head side too, but this is all framework around these. So again, really nice to operate and close. Uh, they actually have a drip rail above each drop window and then our tack door as well. So it's gonna keep this moisture away. I mean, we're, it's sprinkling right now. Um, you know, we'll get to where it'll freeze overnight. And as moisture gets in these, these drop windows and tack doors, you know, it has the potential of actually freezing and, and really hard open where we have the potential of ripping this with our stripping off or we can't even get it down. Or somebody's hitting it from the inside as you're grabbing the latch from the outside. So um, that drip rail really helps. That's not a piece that they just add after the fact and they just take a little strip of aluminum and, and tack weld it. That's actually an extruded piece. So they build that specifically for these doors um, and tack doors as well. You're gonna get your 16 inch awning light. So you have good light coverage on the outside of each side of this trailer. There's gonna be one at the rear, it's an eight inch. And then we have some lights on the inside we'll show you as well. Two 6,000 pound Dexter rubber torsion axles, electric brakes. So again, you need that in a, <coughs> excuse me, integrated brake controller or an aftermarket to operate them. Again, one year quest, no questions asked warranty on the tires. If you catch a nail that can't be patched, if you have blowout road debris, they'll stand behind it. The black wheels with silver, again, ties in really well with this color, uh, just package that we have on this with the charcoal metallic, the black windows, and then the aluminum extrusion. This is a bolt-on fender. So again, saves you time and money if you do tear one of these up versus a weld-on. Weld-on takes more time to cut it off. Well, the new one on, bolt on, lot, again, lot simpler process there. All right, as we get to the stall area here, rear doors are a 60-40 setup because of the width. <coughs> when we get into our wider trailers, seven, six, eight foot wide, we'll go to a 50-50, but in this instance here, it's 60-40 with your wider door being on the right-hand side. If you're loading and unloading, you don't have to open both doors if you don't want to, you have that wider opening there. Maybe you want a rear ramp put on this trailer. Your horses prefer that type of load. Maybe you want to use this for dual purpose. Maybe haul some four wheelers, maybe run the uh, lawnmower to get service, something along those lines. Um, a rear ramp can be added to this. We remove that rubber bumper, it'll be a ramp over. With it being charcoal metallic, we usually keep the white ramps on hand. Uh, could be a special order where it just takes a couple weeks for us to get that in here, but we can get that in, in for you and get it taken care of. <clears throat> Solid dividers, padded as well. This rear stall is a little bit bigger, so we can accommodate for a solid rear divider that's not gonna telescope down. You'll see a lot of competitors will have a, a telescoping divider in this rear stall, and that's so they can cut down on the overall length, less material. So with this, we like the solid dividers, a few less moving parts if possible. Uh, so you have a little bit bigger stall in here, maybe having a companion that you run with, a pony, mini donkey, maybe even a goat. Uh, if you need to, this back stall, you can throw them in here and there's still room for them as well. Stud divider at stall one. As you can see, I just released it and I'm just letting them go. There's big springs on the bottom of these Cimarron dividers that are wanting to pull them towards that driver's side. So again, this trailer's tipped towards the passenger side right now. Uh, if it was nice and flat, these guys would be over there against that wall. But these are things we don't have to hold on to as we're loading and unloading, uh, it's just safer for you, safer for the, for the horses. Speaking of, everything has a radius. I mean, if you put your hands on these dividers, everything's nice and smooth. We wanna make sure horses are nice and safe. Nothing protruding out from the wall. As you can see, even on the paddle latches, they're recessed into the, the wall itself. It's an aluminum powder coated cast piece here. Heavy UHMW uh, 
a plastic paddle latch. That way we don't have metal to metal contact that rattles and creates a lot of noise in here. So it really deadens that. But the stud divider at one's really nice because if, if you're just needing to haul one, two head of horses, you don't necessarily have to utilize this first stall for that third horse. This is a great storage place for you. Throw some buckets, throw some shavings, those type of items in here. Uh, and then we don't have to worry about them getting underneath horses as we are traveling. You're gonna have three two-way roof vents in here. So again, we can manipulate airflow. Again, a lot of airflow through this trailer because of the drops on tail side, but we can manipulate that. And then you have that insulated roof. This is standard on every single Cimarron. <coughs> One, it's really strong. It's a half inch thick. It's reinforced, kind of a honeycomb design to it. Well, it will withstand 150 pounds per square foot. I can walk on this roof and it won't dent it. I don't have to find roof bows to walk on it. Where a lot of competitors with their aluminum roofs, you do, or you'll put a big dent in it. Uh, the most important thing, I, in my opinion, is what it does for temperature control in here. It keeps it 20% cooler than aluminum sheeted roofs in the summertime. So if you think about that when you're traveling and it's 100 degrees, it makes a massive difference in what it does for your horses. So that's standard on every single Cimarron. And then we're also standing on the best floor in the industry. It is a 12 inch deck piece that locks in high and low. It's like tongue and groove. And then they're four inch centers. So just picture your hoof size of a horse, wherever they're standing on a Cimarron floor, they're standing on a support beam. Look at competitors, they're, they'll spread their centers out. They look like I-beams that run across the trailer. They're, those are cheaper made trailers. And then what'll happen is urine will collect. Eventually you'll get those pits in the floor those low spots where urine will go and just sit and start to corrode at that floor. So all these aluminum trailers have to be cared for. You pull the rubber mats out, you power wash them, you assess the floor, let it dry. Little tip is you can get baking soda, sprinkle that down, it'll counteract the acidity of urine, and then you put your mats back in. If you don't wanna mess with the mats and you wanna upgrade to uh, like a worm flooring, a permanent unpenetrable floor, you can do that. Uh, there's a place here in Denver we can get you to uh, that can put that floor in these in these trailers if you'd like. Again, I'm going to shut these backs just because of the wind we're dealing with today. But again, these are independent doors. So they don't necessarily have to go shut in any particular order. And again, they're also key to like, like I was telling you about that tack door and then your feed doors. All our light switches are right here at the back. So again, we have rear awning light. We have another 16 inch awning light on this side, over here on driver's side, and then the one on passenger side. So we can just turn whatever we want on, or in this instance, we've got them all on for you. So there's a good look. You know, very similar drop, drop windows to what we saw on the other side, just on this driver's side, head side for the horses. We're gonna have the jail bars. They do drop down. You just gotta find a little spot right there in that track to open and close them. Screens can be added. You can order those through Cimarron. They just slide over. But again, really easy to operate. And then you have your escape door at stall number one. So like I was mentioning, if you have some other items in there, rather than a, a third horse, you can access them right here from this escape door on the side. Chest bar that goes across that opening. Paddle latch over this door, just because it is going into the stall area, we want these butterfly style latches to go over. That way, if a horse is on the inside and messing with this, they don't get it open as you're traveling. So again, really nice little three horse, whether you're looking for a run around, uh, maybe you're looking to downsize, maybe this is a, a, a good starter trailer for you. Um, this trailer is available today. I'm gonna give you the stock number on it for reference. Again, it's a 2024 Cimarron North Star three horse gooseneck, 5N231240. So we do take trades. So if you are looking to downsize, upgrade, we can help you out there. Financing is available and also delivery. We could potentially bring this to your door. So give us a call. Anybody on the sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.